Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful of Le'aki am out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created you to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line of your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah with another lesson. And... What we're going to focus on in this lesson is, is, is what it's all about. What it's all about, man. The gospel, the good news, the promises that the Most High has made unto our forefathers. The promises that the Almighty God, Yahweh, he's keeping them. You see, that's that's what it's all about, man. The Most High, the Most High being faithful and keeping that oath that he made unto our forefathers, beginning with our forefather Abraham. And what? That... When it's all said and done, he's coming to gather his remnant. You see, the remnant of Israel, those who the Most High is allowing to repent and, 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 and return back unto him through faith in his son, Yahweh Shad. And he's going to gather us from all the lands we've been scattered to, to bring us back into the land that the Most High has given unto our, uh, our forefathers and to their seed after them as an everlasting inheritance. That's what it's all about, man. The Israelites being returned home. And when we go home, we're going to go back in perfection. As it tells us in prophecy according to what the Most High has spoken. See, the Bible is not what the pagan Christian, pagan Christian Roman Catholic Church has been telling you for all these years, man. They've only been giving you lies. See, the true men of the Lord, the prophets, we're giving you the, 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 the right understanding of what's written because it falls in line with what the Most High said. The Most High has promises that he's going to fulfill, promises that he made, you see, the promises that he swore upon himself. He will, he will uphold. That's what it's all about. That's what's being fulfilled right before your eyes. This is why you see the Israelites waking up and returning back unto our God. Through our Lord and our Savior, the true Messiah of the Bible, whose name is Yahweh Shah. You're seeing these things because the Most High is keeping his promise that he made, man. You see? Let me see. Let me see real quick. I think it's a little bit, a few, a few. Yep, there it is. This is Genesis 22. Now listen. <laughs> Matter of fact, let's go back. To Genesis uh, 17 real quick Then we'll go back to Genesis 22 So this is Genesis 20, uh, 17 And we'll start at verse 7 So it says what And I will establish my covenant Between me and thee And thy seed after thee And their generations for an everlasting covenant To be a God unto thee And to thy seed after thee This is what the Most High has promised Unto our forefather Abraham you see, and we know the rundown of, of the lineage goes through what? It goes from Abraham to Isaac and ja to Jacob. Because what did the most I tell Abraham? And Isaac shall thy seed be called. The chosen seed was going to come forth from Isaac. That chosen seed later became what? Jacob and the 12 tribes of Israel. That's who the most I was going to make the everlasting covenant with. No one else. If you're not a part of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the covenant... And the promises, they don't they don't pertain to you. Now verse 8 says what? And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And that land spans from the Nile River to the Euphrates River. That's the land that we're going back to, according to the promise that the Mosai has made, man. You see? 
And to further solidify, we jump fast forward in time to here when Abraham was going to do what? The offering of Isaac. You see? Because Abraham had faith that the Most High was going to uphold his promise that he made by what? By an Isaac shall I see be called. He understood and knew that it well, if the Most High told me that this child is going to be the child of the promise, the child that my uh, my seed becomes as as numerable as the stars of heaven, you see, through him, he would he would be able to raise him up from the dead, right? Abraham had great faith because he held the Most High accountable for the promise that he had already made. Now, when we jump down to this point, this is Genesis twenty two and fifteen. It says. And the angel of Yahweh called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith Yahweh. You see? This is the oath that the Most High is making with our forefather Abraham. And not, and not only did he make this oath, he swore upon himself. The Most High swore upon himself, man. Hebrews 22 and 16. Hebrews 22. Genesis 22 and 16 says what? And said, By myself have I sworn, saith Yahweh. For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, meaning what we're going to be in rulership and rule over the enemies. Verse 18, and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Now, does that mean that the, the, the heathen nations have a part in this? No, man. It just means that eventually Abraham's seed will become scattered all throughout the nations by way of the Israelites being scattered. That's why they're blessed. This is why these nations flourish because they have Israelites living among them, you see, and they're blessed because of it. That's why America became the greatest nation on the earth because the Israelites are here. You see? It doesn't mean that the heathen nations are going to have a part in our blessing. No. Now, when we come into rulership, you heathen nations will be able to be blessed to a certain extent by living up under our rulership. But you won't be on our level in the kingdom of heaven, man. This is a promise and an oath that the Most High has made to his people, beginning with our forefather Abraham. Now, when we jump in prophecy, because that's what it's all about. That's what this entire book is about, man. The Most High keeping that oath that he made unto our forefather Abraham. He promised that he would give that land of Canaan to us as an everlasting possession. And the Most High continues to reiterate that point all throughout biblical prophecy, man. Now, when we go here to Ezekiel 36, we're just going to read straight through this. It says what? The mountains of Israel to be blessed. Why? Because it all goes back to that promise that the Most High made unto our forefather, man. You see, that promise that's going to be upheld. Ezekiel 36 and 1, it says, Also thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus saith the Lord power Yahweh, because thine, the enemy have said against you, Aha, even these ancient high places are are ours in our possession because you have our enemies living in our land right now. Those people who are calling themselves Israelis, they're not the true chosen people of the Lord. They're Edomites. You see, that, and they've taken their land, that land into their possession as if it's theirs, man. The most I didn't promise the land to them. The only reason they're there is because we're in a state of exile right now. You see, and they love to brag and boast in it. You see, over there, they over there warring over a land. All the heathen over there just warring over a land that doesn't belong to any of them, man. That land is being promised to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for an everlasting position. And we're going to go back into it as we, as you're going to see in prophecy, man, according to what the Most High has spoken. Now, we move on to verse 3. It says what? Therefore prophesy and say, thus saith Yahweh power, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that you might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen. And ye are taken up in the lips of talkers, and are in, in, and are in infamy of the people. Therefore, ye mounds of Israel, hear the word of Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shah. Thus saith the Lord Power, Yahweh, to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, to the desolate waste, 
and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about you. Verse 5, Therefore thus saith the Lord power Yahweh, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which are the Edomites. You see, the Israelis, Am, which are actually Am, uh, Amalek or Amalekites, you see, it says what? Which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. And this is what you see. You have heathen, mainly Esau over there, warring over a land that doesn't belong to them. Taking the Most High's land in this, in, into their possession with the joy of all their heart. That's who's in that land, man. That's why we don't see the prophecies being fulfilled that pertain to the Israelites returning back to the land. It's because the Israelites are not there. Now, you might have Israelites scattered amongst those heathen nations that are there, but when it comes to the fullness of the prophecies being fulfilled, they don't fit the bill, man. <laughs> they just don't fit. You see, because first and foremost, there would be no war if the Israelites were back in the land. There would be no wickedness being pushed forth from that land if the true people were there. This is why you have to be tapped into prophecy to understand what's really going on in the earth, man, because prophecy lets you know everything. So it goes on to say, verse 6, now listen. Weak ass bodies, man. Ezekiel 36 and 6 says what? <clears throat> Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, Thus saith the Lord Power Yahweh, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. How is that being done? Because wars being waged on our land, wickedness is over there. You see that they they fucking idol temples and and fucking uh committing all manner of wickedness with pink city just just doing complete abominations in the promised land man that's our that's our land is, is is bearing the shame of the heathen by all that madness that's going on over there and that's why that land is going to have to be purged by way of fire in the midst of world war three this is why those israelis are so terrified uh of those iranians getting missiles but there's nothing that you're going to do to stop it man because just like america's going to be hit with nuclear fire the, the land of Israel, you see, that whole area is going to be engulfed in flames as well because it needs to be purified from all the wickedness that has uh, been taking place over there since we've been gone. It has to be purged. So yes, the land of Israel, the state of Israel is going to be destroyed by way of nuclear fire as well. But it will be rebuilt as we know it will be according to prophecy. Because what? We have, we have to return back to the land according to the Most High's promise. So that's why I, that's how we know our land is going to be built back, built back up. The Most High is going to fulfill that promise, man. He swore upon himself that he would. And this is what this entire chapter goes into. Now verse 7 says what? Therefore thus saith the Lord power Yahweh, I have lifted up mine hand. Surely the heathen that are about you shall bear their shame. This is why you see them in a state of war right now. And it's going to lead to what? Destruction befalling that place. As repayment for all the wickedness they've been doing. For all the lies they've been telling. You see, especially those fucking uh, 1948ers, man, because they funded the transatlantic slave trade to move us far from our border borders, as it tells us in prophecy, man. They have to pay for all that. So... They're going to receive a judgment. All those heathen in that land, the nation's military that going to be, that's going to be gathered over there in that area, they're all going to receive a punishment, man, as judgment for what they've done unto the Israelites. You see? Now, verse 8 goes on to say, But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield, forth, and yield your fruit to my people of Israel. For they are at hand to come. And why is that? It's because the Most High is going to fulfill that promise made unto our forefather Abraham. Of what? Of, of, of that land our forefather Abraham was sojourning in. He's going to give it unto Abraham and to his seed after, them, after him as an everlasting possession. 
And the Most High constantly reiterates this point all throughout prophecy, man. All the way through to the New Testament. Over and over and over and over again, the Most High says this because what? He's going to uphold that oath that he made. That's what it's all about. That's what's being fulfilled. This is what's happening. The Most High is keeping his promise and he's having his remnant wake up in these latter days to return back unto him through faith in Yahweh Shai so he can keep the promise that he made. We are going back into our land, man, our own country. Let me see. Uh, I think it's four. Hebrew 6 and 16 okay now this is a uh, now listen <laughs> I was right here that's a, <laughs> Hebrew 6 and uh, 13 it says for when the most I made promise to Abraham now this is the thing man if the Old Testament is done away with according to the the, the, the pagan Roman Catholic Christian Church why is the Apostle Paul reiterating what took place in the Old Testament? It's because the Old Testament has not been done away with. There are prophecies that still need to be fulfilled in the Old Testament. This oath that the Most High made has to be fulfilled of the Israelites returning back home. Of, of, of Abraham and his seed, his descendants, receiving that land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. That has to be fulfilled. And this is the process that you're watching play out right before you the remnant of israel is being reawakened here in these last days to be gathered when the lord yahweh shah returns so this promise that the most i made unto our forefather abraham a millennia ago you see can be fulfilled that's what this is all about that's the good news that's the gospel man being saved and, 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 and the most I fulfilling all the promises that he's made to his chosen people. That's what this is all about. Hebrews 6 and 13 says what? For when the most High made promise to Abraham. Because he could swear by no greater. He swear by himself. He put it on himself that he was going to uphold it. There's nothing higher than the most High. Call Allah Yahweh Shemiah Shah 441. You see, there's nothing higher than the Most High. So he swore upon himself that he was going to uphold it, man. Hebrews 6 and 13. For when the Most High made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Verse 14 saying, Surely, blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And how is that going to be done? By Isaac having Jacob. And Jacob bringing forth the 12 tribes of Israel. And now we become as numerable as the stars of heaven. And as numerable as the sand on the seashore, man. That fulfills the promise made. At least a portion of it. And guess what? We're going to be, we're going to multiply forever. In the kingdom of heaven as well. We're not we're always gonna multiply. Because we're a never ending nation, man. Verse 15 says what? And so and so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Verse 16 For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein the most high willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, which are who? The Israelites, go read Romans 9. It tells you who the heirs of promise are. 
the Israelites, man. So the Most High says what? Verse uh, 17, we're in the Most High willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. So the Most High wanted to show us that the immutability of his counsel, what he's spoken, you see, according to his will, he wanted to prove unto us that it was unchangeable. It could never be altered. You see? To do that, he, he, he swore on himself. He confirmed it by an oath and swore upon himself that he will uphold it to show us that he does not change his mind. That his will is going to be exactly what he's ordained it to be from the beginning. Hold up. Malachi 3 and 6 tells us what? For I am Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You see? Verse 7 says, well, even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you. And the only ones that the Most High is allowing to return unto him is the remnant of the nation of Israel. As you read in Isaiah chapter 10, starting at verse 20. Return unto me and I will return unto you. And that's being done through the, that's being done with the remnant. The remnant is being able to is able to return back to the Most High through their faith in Yahweh Shah. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said Yahweh of hosts. But ye said we will not return, and that's that, that's where the two thirds find themselves in the spirit of disobedience, not wanting to return to the Most High. So that's why only a remnant is going to be saved, as prophesied. To fulfill the oath and the promises that the Most High made unto our forefathers, man. That's what this is all about. Back in Hebrews 6 and 17. Wherefore the Most High willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel. Confirmed it by an oath. Let's see what it says in the NLT. The Most High, uh, Hebrews 6 and 17 in the NLT, the Most High also bound himself with an oath so that those who received the promise, which are who? The Israelites, could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. Why? Because he is Yahweh. He changes not. Therefore, therefore, us sons of Jacob are not consumed, man. <laughs> you see? It's all here. This is the gospel, man. The good news that the Most High hasn't forsaken us. That he's going to bring us back unto him and the fullness of it through our faith in his son, Yahweh Shai. And all the promises and the blessings and the everything. He's going to finally give it to us. As he promised he would. That's what these prophecies are all about. This is what the Most High was speaking through the mouth of the prophets all along, man. I'm going to punish you because of your disobedience, but don't worry. I'm not going to keep you in that state forever because I have a promise that I made to your father that I'm going to keep. Not only did I make this promise unto him, I swore upon him, I swore upon myself and made an oath that I will uphold that promise I, I, I made to fulfill my word. That's what's being done here. Not that bullshit that you pagan Christians are preaching, man. Verse 18 says what? That by two immutable, Hebrews 6 and 18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for the Most High to lie, the Most High cannot lie. If he said he's going to do something, it's going to be done. Hold up. <laughs> One of, hey, my favorite scripture, man. There's this A, hey, Numbers 23 and 19. It says what? The Most High is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not have he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? Exactly. The Most High doesn't just speak to speak. Just to be saying shit. The Most High speaks with a purpose, with an intent. For his will to be fulfilled. That's what's going to be done. If he said it, he's going to do it. If he spoke it, it he's going to make good on it. 
And, and to make sure he would make good on it, he swore on himself that he would do it, man. That's the first instance of on, of on God. The most high was the first one to do that, man. How you niggas always down on oh, God this and swear to God that? The most high was the first to do that. So we can be fully comforted that he was going to fulfill everything that he's promised unto our forefathers and unto us, their descendants, man. Call her law, Yahweh, by Shemiah, was shah. So it says what? Hebrews 6 and 18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for the Most High to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both short and steadfast, and which entereth into the, into, into that within the veil, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Yahweh Shai, made in high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And once again, the oath is going to be fulfilled through what? Through our faith in Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the one that's going to bring us into all these things the Most High has promised, man. We have to have faith in him. And, and through our faith in Yahweh Shah, all these prophecies are going to be fulfilled. All of it. It says what? That's about good. <laughs> Hebrews, damn. Hebrews 36 and uh, 8, it says what? But ye, O mountains of Israel... Ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to the to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come, because the Most High is fulfilling his promise that he made by way of an oath. We're going back into our land eventually, man. Verse 9. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown, because our land is going to be built up. It's going to be tilling song by who? By way of the heathen. Because they're going into slavery under us as the Most High promised they would. Did we not just read, let your seed possess the gate of their enemies? That goes into us having rulership over the heathen. Did not we, is that not a part of the blessing that our forefather Jacob received from our forefather Isaac? Let nations bow down unto thee. Let thy mother's son serve thee. Is that not a part of the promise that the Most High made unto our brother Yahweh Shai? Ask of me now, and I shall give the heathen for thine inheritance, and the other uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. This is what's coming to us, man. Complete rulership. And the headquarters is going to be what? The land of Canaan, the land that the Most High promised unto our forefathers, and to us their descendants. Verse 10 says what? And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it, and the city shall be inhabited, and the waste shall be built. Why, why are the waste going to have to be built? Because it's going to be destroyed in the midst of World War III by way of nuclear fire. And once that land finishes burning, we're going to round you heathen up, cart you off into chattel slavery just like you did us, and you're going to build up our kingdom. You're going to build up our land. You see, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna divide the heating up into workforces, and your ass is gonna go all throughout the earth cleaning this planet up, man. But it's gonna begin with what? You building up the land of Israel. As the most high has promised. Because that's gonna be the headquarters of the kingdom of heaven on the earth. As it tells you in the book of Revelation, chapter 5. You have made us to you have made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. According to what? According to what the most high has spoken. According to what he's promised us. Verse 11. And I will multiply man upon you. And beast. Slot. Slot here. Ezekiel 36 and 11. And I will multiply upon you man and beast. And they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates. And will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh Baal Shemi This is what's being promised to us man. And everything that has anything, yeah, everything that has anything to do with the Israelites is going to flourish because at this point, we're going to be up under the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. We still have to come in as, as a people. 
No more death because we're going to be up under the second covenant. Bro, we have so much coming to us and it's all according to what the Most High has promised. Once again, this is the gospel. You see, and the only, and the only way we get to everything the Most High has promised is what? Faith and the one you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, whose true name is Yahweh Shah. You have to believe upon our Lord and Savior to be brought into this. You have to believe on, on, on the 100% doctrine to be brought into this. You can't be talking about you an Israelite, but you don't want to call on the right name. You can't be talking about you an Israelite, but you remixing the doctrine, talking about all nations can be saved. And all, all the heathen going to be brought into the promises and the blessings. That's a fucking lie. Because the promises and the blessings and the covenant pertain to who? The Israelites as it is written in Romans 9. Go read it. Why, is it, why does it only pertain to the Israelites? Because it fulfills the promise the Most High made unto our forefather Abraham. This is what it's all about. Verse 12 says what? Yeah, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel. We're going back to our land, man. Our everlasting possession. And they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be in and thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. Why, why is it going to become our inheritance? Because it was promised unto us. And the most I told you, the verse prior, that he's going to rebuild that land better than the first time he built it. It's going to surpass what it was during the time of the garden eastward in Eden. It's going to be even more beautiful than that. This is what we have to look forward to. This is the gospel, the good news for the remnant first and foremost. And for all you Israelites who can't get it, you'll get it when you're reborn into the kingdom of heaven after death by pain. The most I was going to put you rebellious Israelites to death. But hey, once we get up in your mama and, and lay that seed, you'll be born back into the kingdom in your right mind. You see? Verse. <laughs> yeah. Ezekiel 36 and 12 says what? Uh, I'm sorry. Verse 13. Thus saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, because they say unto you, Thy land devours up men. And has bereaved thy thy nations, and the only reason it was that way because we were we were in the land committing the wickedness. You can only live in the holy land if you're living holy. The Most High gave us instructions to follow when we went into that land. We were supposed to uphold that, and we didn't. So guess what? We we a a lot of us died in that land because of our disobedience. But when we go back, it won't be that way. Because we're going to go back in perfection. We just we just did a lesson on the second covenant and what that entails. That's how we're going back to the land in full glory. So we would never have to be spewed out again because we're never going to go off again. These, these are the things that Moses promised to the Israelites, man. And you once again, like the elders been saying, the elders say what? You cannot be a low-level thinker in this truth, in the fullness of the truth, man. The elder Ariala says what? You cannot have an apartment mindset when it comes to this truth. And this is what we're starting to find out. A lot of you Israelites have an apartment mindset where you don't even think past Babylon, man. Hell, well, the, the term speaks for itself. You don't think past your apartment. <laughs> you really try to uh, encapsulate the truth of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah to this box and you can't. The Most High is about to give his people the entire universe, which is going to be a sandbox that we're going to be able to build and, and, and cultivate as we please in righteousness, man. Just doing whatever we want to do in righteousness all throughout the universe. That's what the Most High has given us. That's how you have to think when you, when you fully come into this thing. This is not some low-level type of venture that's going on, man. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is about to do big things with his people, but it begins with what? Us being saved. Us being brought into perfection. When our land finishes burning, we're going to come down, gather you heathen up, caught you off. You're going to build it up. Once that is done, you're going to clean the earth up and we're going we're to keep it pushing. What Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is doing through the Israelites is on another level, man. And a lot of you Israelites who claim to be Israelites, you can't even see it. The Most High is about to bring us into immortality, man. We're about to become gods. 
having no limits. No limits. This is what's happening for the Israelites. You see? We're going to be limitless just like our father, man. Just like our big brother, Yahweh Shah. A lot of you Israelites believe we're about to be in America forever. You know why? Because you don't have the vision. Because the Most High is not dealing with you. You just know you, you just know you're an Israelite, and that's all that's all it is for you. But going on, Ezekiel thirty-six and thirteen, thus saith the Lord of Power Yahweh, because they say unto you, Thy land devours up men, and, the, and has bereaved many, and has bereaved thy nations. Therefore shalt thou devour men no more, neither bereave thy nations any more, saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. You see that? Why? It's because when we go back into our land, we're going to be in perfection. And, and we will never have a reason for the Most High to ever punish us again. Because we're going to keep his law, statutes, and commandments in perfection. Up under the second covenant, a state we haven't been brought into yet. That's going to be fulfilled when the Lord Yahweh Shah returns to save the remnant from whatever we're scattered to uh, 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 from around the earth. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. Now, verse 15 says what? Neither will I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the heathen anymore. You see that? Neither shall thou neither shall thou bear the reproach of the of the people anymore. Neither shall thou cause thy nations to fall anymore, save Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Ain't gonna be no heathen all up in our land like they're doing right now, man. Having portions of the land as if it belongs to them. Ain't gonna be no no more of that. Now, if we want to have heathen live on our property to not nah, fucking uh, uh, our servants, our handmaids, that'd be different. Might have a little slave quarters in the back, whatever it may be. You see, but the shit they doing right now in that land, mosque all over the place, uh, uh, Christian churches and all that. Hell, hell no, nah, it won't be none of that. Every every single last one of those type of buildings is gonna be destroyed. For wherever they are on the earth, man. Because only one God is going to be served once the Israelites come into power. And that's the almighty God, Yahweh. Verse 16 says what? Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way. And by their doings, their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. There it is. We defiled our land by the wickedness that we were doing. When you go back into our history, that's why we kept going into captivity. Because of our disobedience. That's why we were exiled, because of our disobedience multiple times. But this time is the final time, man. You see? We were unclean before the Most High as a woman on her period. Let's see what it says in the NLT. Yup. Ezekiel 36 and 17 in the NLT, it says, Son of man, when the people of Israel were living in their own land, they defiled it by the evil way they lived. To me, their conduct was as unclean as a woman's, a woman's menstrual cloth. Showing you that a woman is unclean when she's on a period. You see? But that's what it is. That's, that's how we were conducting ourselves, man. Go back and read that history. Doing all manner of abomination, man. Worshipping idols, just do it. wilding the fuck out. So when, when, when we walk up to the street, hey, we can't blame the Most High. He he did he did exactly what he was supposed to do. It was us that fucked up, man. And the remnant, we're, we're acknowledging our fault. We're, we're acknowledging our shortcoming, man. We ain't we ain't those type of Israelites acting like we uh, we don't know why. No, we we know exactly why. We fucked up. And we got everything we deserved. You see? Verse 18 says what? Wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land, the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. Look at that. Told, we was wilding the fuck out. When the first, the first commandment the Most High gave us was what? I am Yahweh thy power. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I, Yahweh thy power, am a jealous power. Therefore, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And, the, and Jake, 
were so infatuated by the false idols of the heathen nations. And that's what got us in the condition that we're in to this day. So the most I told us why he did what, uh, what we were doing. And this was the punishment for it. Verse 19. And I scattered them among the heathen. And they were dispersed through the countries. According to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. And this is where you get the mystery of the Gentiles from. The Gentiles, the ones that are uh, being allowed to return to the Most High, are Israelites that the Most High scattered into exile. Being there for generations on end to the point to where their forefathers had completely departed away from the understanding that we were Israelites. And they began to raise their children and their children's children and their children's 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 children in the ways of the heathen. Completely forgetting that they were Israelites. Those are the Gentiles who were allowed to return in the New Testament. It wasn't actual heathen nations, man. You see? That was us before we woke up to this truth. Living here, living here in America, thinking that what we're calling us African American, so forth and so on, eating America, the, the American diet, pork on, pork on everything, when that, that's against our law. I had worshiping false idols, whether you were into Christianity or Islam or you became a Buddhist. Shit, people, some, some brothers and sisters were what? Atheists. And that made us what? Gentiles unto the Most High. Because that's how we were conducting ourselves. But now through our Lord Yahweh Shah, we've been granted return. We're being reconciled. You see? That's what the gospel of reconciliation is all about. How the fuck can you heathen be reconciled to the Most High when he, when he, he never had anything to do with you from the jump? Those who are being reconciled are Israelites who are in the state of exile. But now they're having their, what? Their mind renewed through this Holy Spirit going out. And they're being able to return back to the Most High. That's who the Gentiles are. That's the mystery of the Gentiles. That's who's been accepted back, in, back into the fold. <laughs> the Israelites were in a state of exile for generations on end. Good Lord. Ezekiel, <laughs> Ezekiel 36 and 20 says what? And when they entered it unto the heathen, now listen, Ezekiel 36 and 20. And when they entered unto the heathen, whether they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, these are the people of Yahweh and are gone forth out of his land. How did we profane his name? These heathen knew, who, they knew who we were. But what were we doing? Living amongst them, acting like them, worshiping their gods. That's how the Most High's name became profane among the heathen. Because of the conduct of his people. Verse 21 says what? But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whether they went. Israel to be renewed for his name's sake. Who? Israel to be renewed. No one else. Let's, let's define this real quick. Renewed. Oh, good Lord. Look at that. Renewed. Having been resumed, reestablished, or revived. Re renew. Resume. Return to. Pick up again. Take again. Come back to, come back to what? Our previous state of relations that we had with the Most High. You see? To give fresh life or, or strength to, revive. I'm looking for some. Renewed, renew, reestablish. A reestablish a relationship. That's what's been, that's what's happening right now. How's that? And how's that relationship being reestablished through the Almighty God's Son Yahweh Shah? 
the the relationship between the Most High and His people is being reestablished through the one you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, whose true name is Yahweh Shai. Why? To fulfill the promises and the oath that He made unto our forefather Abraham. Good Lord, call Allah Yahweh Shai. Repeat a statement. Stand further. I mean, I guess we get the point. <laughs> oh, man. Call Allah, y'all, about Shem Yahushua. But we go back. So it says what? Ezekiel 36 and 22. Because once again, that's what it's all about. The Most High keeping that promise that he made unto our forefather Abraham. And this is the way he decided to do it. No one has any say so in that matter. This is what the Most High decided to do. He scattered his people because of their disobedience, and he's bringing that he, he's bringing that faithful remnant back from, from from all the lands that he scattered us to. And, and it's the con, it's the con, the narrative is constant all throughout the scriptures. No matter where you read it in prophecy, it says the same thing over and over again because it all goes back to the promise and the oath made unto our forefather Abraham. That's what it all goes back to. That's why you guys are, you guys say the same thing over and over. That what else can we say? There's nothing new. The Most High's already determined what He's gonna do. That's why He constantly repeats through different prophets, even even in the New Testament. <laughs> so Ezekiel thirty six and twenty three, I'm sorry twenty two. It says, therefore say unto the house of Israel. To the house of Israel, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, thus saith the Lord Power Yahweh, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whether ye went. You see? The most I was doing is to, to, to be found faithful and true to his word, to the oath that he made. For his holy, because he, he swore upon what? He swore upon himself that he will uphold that promise and that oath that he made unto Abraham. 23 says what? And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which he had profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, saith the Lord Power, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. And, and that's why the Most High set up his prophets to give, to, 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 to give out this message. So when it does happen, you're going to know that the one true living power did these things because the, mo the Most High's messengers, his angels, put you up on notice of what's about to be done. Whether you believe it or not, it's going to happen. And the Most High promises to do what? It goes on to say, verse 24, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land, fulfilling what? The promise and the oath that he made unto Abraham. That's what this is all about. <laughs> He's going to gather the, the remnant of Israel out of all countries that we've been scattered to. This is why he had the Apostle Paul going into all these different places in that region, preaching up to the Israelites, letting them know the good news and, and that the Most High was going to fulfill the promise that he made. This is why we be, we've been scattered to the uttermost parts of the earth. Having the good news preached unto us. The gospel preached unto us. And, 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 the, and the teachers, tell, we're telling our people what? The remnant of our people that what? The Most High is going to be faithful to the promise that he made. He's coming to save us from, from whatever we're scattered to. He's coming to save his people, the children of Israel, from captivity. For the once and for, for all, man. For the final time. And we're going back into our land that he promised unto our forefathers and unto us as an everlasting possession. Whew. Verse 25 says what? Then will I sprinkle clean water. Bro, this goes into the, uh, into the entire promise made. Did not the most high, did we not just read in uh, Genesis 17? How the most I told Abraham he was going to make an everlasting covenant with his seed to be our God and we were going to be his people. He's giving you the rundown of that once again through Ezekiel. 
He gave it to you through Jeremiah. He gave it to you through Isaiah. He gives it to you all the way into the book of Revelation. The apostle Paul reiterates Jeremiah 31. The Lord Yahweh talks about it. Because this is what the Most High intends to do. It all lines up with each other, man. The old and the new go hand in hand because it all is all about the Most High fulfilling His will, fulfilling that promise, and hey, making good on that oath He made unto our forefather Abraham. It's all going to happen. That's why the Bible is consistent when you read it with the proper understanding. Something you pagan Christians don't do. Some, some, something that you a lot of you Israelites don't do. I U I C I S U P K, G O C C, the fucking y'all Israelites. Y'all don't go into the scripture with the proper understanding. Making all type of points that contradict what's actually written. Because you're not you're not giving the true doctrine, man. Everything we bring out is is consistent. Wherever we go, it all adds up to what the Most I said, man. So Ezekiel 36 and 25, it says what? Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. What is he talking about bringing us into? That's the second covenant. Being, com being made completely righteous. No more sin and no more going off ever again. This is the everlasting covenant. The most I promised our forefather Abraham, he will bring us into. Why is he saying this through Ezekiel? Because the Most High intends to uphold that promise made. Verse 26 says what? A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and give you a heart of flesh. Meaning what? He's going to give us those new righteous immortal bodies, so we will never go off again. No more wicked thoughts. You see? No more being in, the, in his wicked flesh that's subject to sin, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is going to make us completely righteous. So when we go back into our land, we will never go off again. And that fulfills what? The prophecy of our land not bereaving us of men anymore. We'll, we'll never have to die again. Because we're going to live in that land in the fashion the most I intended us to live in, in it from the beginning. In, in complete perfection. and complete righteousness. Because that's the only way you can live in the Holy Land. That's why every nation that's been in there being cast out. Because they weren't living right, including us. But that it won't be that way once the Lord Yahweh Shai brings us back into it. You see? <sighs> Call Allah Yahweh Shai. Verse 27 says what? I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. This is... That we're not doing this in perfection right now. That lets us know that we're not under the second covenant for you clowns who are preaching that bullshit. This won't be done until the Lord Yahweh Shai comes to save us, which has not happened yet. Verse 28 says what? Not li <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Ezekiel 36 and 28. And, and when we come into that state, what are we going to do? Verse 28. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Fulfilling what? The promise made unto Abraham, man. Good Lord. Let's see something. Let's see if Ezekiel 36 and 28 takes us back to something. Let's see. Oh my goodness. Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 32, Ezekiel 11, Ezekiel 37. <laughs> oh, man, you see that? Hosea 1 and 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, fulfilling the promise made unto Abraham, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not the people of the Mo ye are not my people, which is what? This final captivity that we suffered up on the Esau. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power. You see? Because of all the captivity, captivities before this one, we knew we were the Israelites. 
Zechariah 13 and 9. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and we will refine them as gold is fine, uh, slot, and we will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried, and they shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and they shall, and I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, Yahweh is my power. <laughs> red letter, red letter, the Lord Yahweh shot, Matthew 22 and 32. I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The Most High is not. The most high is not the power of the dead, but of the living. If 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 God was for all people, and y'all claim the Lord, the, the the Messiah came and preached that, why isn't he saying that right here? He said the most high is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Just like we're telling you. Man, listen. You see? But it says what? <laughs> Ezekiel 36 and 28. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. All goes back to the promise and oath made. Verse 29. <laughs> Man. Verse 29 says what? I will also save you from all your uncleanness. And I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. No more curse. Once we brought into that second covenant, there will be no more curse. You see, the curses are going to be taken from us and put upon our enemies. And us as Israelites are going to be brought into those blessings that we read about in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. You see, verse 30 says what? And I will multiply the fruit tree and the increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach or famine among the heathen. Then ye shall remember your own evil ways and your doings that are not good, and ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight. For your iniquities and for your abominations. You see? And especially the two thirds who are going to be reborn in the kingdom, they're going to be in a state of sorrow or, let me say, ashamed of their behavior that they exhibited here in captivity. Because we're already going through it. We're already ashamed of, of what we've, you know, so how we've been conducting ourselves. We, we, we felt that shame when we woke up to the truth. That's what. That's another reason. That's another thing that compelled us to repent. You see, from all the BS we were doing, man. When we found out what, how we was living was wrong, it, it, it brought us into a state of shame, man. You see. Now, verse uh, thirty-two. Not for your sakes do I this, saith Yahweh Power. Be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. And once again, man, that's the, that's the spirit that the remnant is in right now. That's why we're in a humble, lowly, contrite spirit. Begging the most high to save us every day, man. Begging for the forgiveness, you see, of, of, of the Lord. And to have mercy upon us. You see? Verse 33 says what? Thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, in the day that I shall shut up, in the day that I have I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will cause you to dwell in the cities, and the waste shall be built. Meaning what? We're going back, we're going back into our land, and it's going to be built back up. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by, because it's going to be made desolate once. That nuclear destruction hit it. Hit it. You see? Verse 35 says what? Now. <laughs> it says what? And they shall say. This land that was desolate. Is become like the garden of Eden. And the waste and, desol and desolate ruined cities. Are become fenced and inhabited. Why? Because the heathen are going to go to work. To build our land up. That's what... Is that not what it said say in prophecy? Oh, 61, I'm sorry. Nope, 60. Then I went too far down. I did. There we go. Isaiah 60 and 10 says what? The sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. 
But in my wrath, I smote thee. You see, he, he was wrathful against us because of our disobedience. He smote us and put us up under those curses. But it says what? But in my favor, have I had mercy on thee? That's the balance. Yeah, he put his foot in our ass. And we deserved every ass kicking the most I gave us as a people. You see, we had to suffer the most eyes wrath because what? We fucked up. And we deserved it. But in the balance of the most high, he's going to take us out of this condition and have mercy upon us and show favor unto us unlike the world has ever seen before. Once again, the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. You see? This is what we're coming into, man. It's not some low-level type of thing. But it goes on to say... Verse 36, then the heathen that are left around about you shall know that I, Yahweh, build the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. I, Yahweh, have spoken it and will do it. And how are they going to know this? Because, hey, the prophets have put you up on notice through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah. We're, we're telling you what's about to happen. Even though a lot of you don't believe, a lot of our people don't believe, but guess what? That's not going to stop it from happening. Romans 3 and 3. What if some shall not believe? Shall I make the faith of the Most High without effect? Yahweh forbid. Because the Most High is going to do everything he promised he would do. We got it in Numbers 23 and 19. It's going to be done. And he's even telling you what, once again right here. I Yahweh have spoken it and I will do it. You see? Verse 37. Thus saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. You see that? Who's inquiring of the most how to do this for us? The remnant. The ones who are going to return here in these last days. Why do you think we're out here chanting uh, a Bob a ball, man? Why do you think we're out here preaching and prophesying against this place? And hastening the coming of the day of the Lord. That's us inquiring of the Most High to do it for us. To bring it to pass. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is why we're signing and crying each and every day on these videos. Signing and crying out there on the highways and byways. Because we are longing for the Most High to fulfill the promise that he's made unto our forefathers. And unto us their descendants. The remnant is doing that man. While the rest of you niggas is in the spirit of continuing on in Babylon the Great forever. Even a lot of you who know you're Israelites. And that's why the Most High is going to leave your ass here and destroy you right along with this place, man. Because you're an enemy. You're not in the spirit for the Most High's will to come to pass. You're faking the fucking, you're faking the funk, man. So Ezekiel 36 and 37 one more time, man. Thus saith the Lord Power Yahweh, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them like with men like a flock because we're going to be blessed. Do, once again, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. Verse 38 says what? As the flock, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem and her solemn, her solemn feast, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men. And they shall know that I am Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And how, how do you how are you gonna know that? It's because the prophets put you up on notice and, and gave you the understanding of the Most High's will. You see? We're the only we're the only group of people on this earth revealing unto you the true will of the God of the Bible, man. Nobody else is doing that. You see, but that's what it is. That's what's happening. <laughs> this has been done. And the Most High is fulfilling that promise and that oath that he made unto our forefather Abraham, man. All these different events you see taking place on the earth is leading up to everything the Most High promised to do being fulfilled. You see? And you've been put on notice. And so with that, I'm going to end it by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah and the sincere peace and salutation to all you hopefully let Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Abba.